Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we letter together as a community every week. And we are continuing on with this watercolor slash lettering projects and we are making some more cards. So we're making wreath cards and I say some more because if you've been with us for our February box, we actually did a bunch of cards then and I wanted to do more because we all can use cards any occasion. So I wanted to make some that you can use for thank you cards, congrats cards, sympathy cards, and then of course writing someone's name. So those are the different cards we are going to be making here today together. The, that was last time, so I'm going to use this, this side. The supplies that we're using, are water, the watercolors are azure blue, really pretty blue, red, and deep yellow. And then the lettering tools that I'm using, or it's painting lettering tools, is the Round Zero Princeton Heritage. And then the other one is the Fudenosuke, and I'm using the soft tip ones. So if you have a the, the hard tip one, which looks like this, which is blue, you can also use that. You can use any brush pen. You can use any supply. Yeah, use what you want. You can have it. You get one. You get one. <laughs> You all get a brush pen. You all get one. If you pay for it. <laughs> so those are the different supplies. I'm using watercolor paper for this because we're using watercolors. It's the Canson Extra Large brand that we all like here. Let's make art. The five steps are, one, cut your watercolor paper because you, if you get it, it will probably be 9 by 12. Cut your watercolor paper. Step two, mix your colors. Step three, paint the leaves all the leaves. Step four is there's a few practice worksheets that you can download on our website. We actually, did you know this, Keenan? There's a learn, I think it's called learn with us tab on the website. And then now there's a digital downloads tab. I did know that. Yeah. So you guys can go there. I can direct you to somewhere specific and you can get all the free downloads there. So that's the fourth step. And then the fifth step is we're going to apply the practice that we do and then create the lettering inside. Can I add something about those digital downloads? Yeah, go for it. So they have to be added to your cart, like fake yes. purchased. They're free, but you have to put them in your cart to get them. Yeah, because it says zero dollars. Yes. yes. It's zero dollars. Has, that, has, has someone been confused on that? No, I just want to make sure. Okay. So I, maybe? I don't know. No, 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 that's fair. Keenan's got your back. Yeah, I got you. Thank you for saying that. You're welcome. Um, okay, so to make your cards, these are homemade cards, and you have different ways that you can do it. Keenan, do you like folded cards or note cards? I don't have a preference. Actually, I, well... Sometimes I like the folded ones because it's got a pretty picture, and then you open it, and you're like, a note as well. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, you could still do the same thing if you flip it over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But, so you can either have a folded card. So if you want to do a folded card, what I would do for you is I would cut your paper in half. I'm just using a scrapbook cutter and I'm cutting the paper, the nine by 12 in half. So I'm trying to maximize my paper. So if you want, then if you want a folded card, just fold that in half simply. But I'm going to, so that I can make sure I get the most out of this paper, I'm gonna make four different cards. So I'm gonna cut these into four. So I'm cutting it in half. So what that makes is it goes nine by six and then it makes a four and a half by, I wrote it on the step-by-step -step sheet, four and a half by six note cards. And that fits, that can fit into a couple different size envelopes. But this way, you can just maximize the paper. It's probably nice to get a folded card if it has something inside. Yeah, like money. That's green. <laughs> yes. Can't really staple it I to just the card. About that. <laughs> or tape it. Oh, get a little washi tape. If it's a card, you're probably still going to put it in the envelope. Yeah. So you should be good. <laughs> but okay, so I cut my paper. Now I'm going to use a pencil. So if you can see, there are all these different wreath options that we are going to do. It's basically a circle. So if circles aren't your thing to draw, help yourself out. And this is kind of small, but let's see. If you 
use something that is round just as your guideline and maybe that'll be helpful actually and I'm going to then paint around it so that I'm not painting exactly on my line. So that's a really helpful thing if you, maybe I'll do, do we have anything else that's circular? Um, a roll of paper towels. What shape does, or what, let's see, this is actually a little bit bigger. So the other trick that I just want, ooh, yeah, oh, yeah, this dear. is too hard. <laughs> How's that wreath? <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Ooh, thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> is if you want to draw a, this one, which is a oval, I have a quick trip, 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 trick for you. Quick trip. It's a gas station in the Midwest. <laughs> is you draw a circle first, and then what you do is you add, is you start in the middle on one side, and it, use that as your starting point, and then just kind of draw a swim cap. I think that's what what's we've said before. Swim What cap. have we said before? I don't remember, but I like the swim cap. <laughs> <laughs> draw a swim cap. Draw a beard. <laughs> And then you have an oval. <laughs> I'd love to hear what you guys see. You should write that in the comments. But So that's how you can help yourself draw an oval if you want it to be kind of symmetrical. So that's my tip for that. I am going to now start painting. I have so many different options. Okay, so what we're going to start with is Mixing our colors. So this is step three already. I want to do some examples. So when you are drawing leaves, first of all, if you do not feel like you're an artist, we all believe as a company that you are. So a little pep talk is that everyone's creative. I 100% believe that in my bones that everyone's creative. And so don't let yourself Stop before you've even started. So give yourself a, a chance to try this out. I'm going to guide you through it. I know you can do it. So you are starting with blue, azure blue, and you're starting with deep yellow. Yellow and blue make green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix a few different shades of green. And to, to help you out, I this will come, if you have our box, I created this color wheel so that you can see there's the red, deep yellow, and the blue that we started with. So we're gonna now be working on the bottom part of this. So if you see, if I mix equal parts of blue and yellow, I'm gonna get a straight green. So I'm just gonna mix that, add the same amount of drops. And then if I wanna make, I'm doing this opposite, but if I wanna make a more yellow green, I'm gonna have more yellow. And then if I want more of a blue green, I'm gonna have less yellow. Oops, that was a lot of yellow. We'll see what happens. So this one I want to be the blue green, so I'm gonna have more blue. And this one I wanna just have a little bit of blue. So you should, well, you should. That blue is strong. That blue is really strong. Oh yeah, this, so we're going for actually, What's really cool is if you have some swatches. Oh, that is such a pretty color though. That is pretty. I'm gonna keep that. So there's there's the green. That's a little lighter green. So what I'm gonna do is actually I have my yellow there, so I'm just gonna keep going on this color wheel actually. I'm gonna pull this green and mix this into here. And there is the more yellow green. Mm. Here we go. So you can actually fill this entire palette with different colors, different versions of those colors. And so what, maybe, let's see. I might do an in-between. So you can have fun with mixing your different versions. So give yourself a couple different versions of colors. And then when you are painting, I'm going to, let's see. I'm trying to think the best way for you to learn. I'm actually going to draw a few on here and then I'll paint them so you can see. So to practice if you want before going to your final card is pick up a color. Let's see, the first one I wanna show, super loose and abstract. 
So again, I know you can do this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a stroke. Maybe if I wanna get more color. And I'm gonna push and smush the brush and then kind of get to the point at the bottom. So that creates this more almond or eyeball shape look. And so you can do that again on the other side maybe is just draw a line and then smush the brush and then kind of get to a point like that. So that's one way to make more abstract style leaves. Let's see, what else do we got here? You can also make a leaf, let's go to a different color, that has is open, so it's more of an outline. So you're gonna do a stroke like again, so it's kind of a curved stroke. And instead of smushing my brush, I'm just going to apply the same amount of pressure and just draw a circle or a, a curve like that so it leaves it open. You could do the same technique of smushing, but I'm just smushing with more space in between and then getting to a curved point like that. Special smush. <laughs> Did you decide what word you would say if, I, if you didn't say smush? No. Press. <laughs> oh, well, but Full you're body. smushing the brush. Yeah, press works. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm still going to say brush. Yeah, please do. Uh, another type of of ones that you can do is you can play so with it jumping off of these two techniques you can take the same technique actually so i'm going to choose this one for now and i'm going to do the same thing but i'm just going to draw smaller oh, almond shapes just little guys just little bitty guys so that is another version with that let's see there's so many different ways you can then go if you want to maybe have some waves and maybe curve that down that kind of looks more like a banana leaf leaves can be any shape i don't think i've ever seen a banana leaf really you've seen them in hawaii i've seen a banana i'll show you banana you've okay. definitely seen them in Kauai. have i yeah all right or monstera do you know a monstera leaf yes i've seen the painting <laughs> i was like you know what that is um, <laughs> we have a kit called Monstera Leaf. <laughs> yeah, we actually do. Oh, there's so many different kits actually that Sarah's done that she's way more technical than I am, am in the drawing of leaves. So again, these are more abstract style leaves for us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say. So I'm going to start and use a couple of those techniques and just go for it. When you're doing this, what I suggest doing is doing a mix of different colors, or you can if you want, do a mix of different colors. So my circle is pretty small, so I'm gonna use that as my guideline, but I'm gonna draw around it. So when I do a stroke, I'm just gonna go around it, do the same thing as I was showing you, is just smushing the brush, making more almond shapes. And as you go around, continue to draw a curve, I'm gonna pick up a different color Maybe that one, there's a little bit of space. So again, I'm smushing and then coming to the tip. So that's what I'm doing for this technique. Let's pick up another color. So again, I'm just drawing a curve. You can decide, so if you want it to be more symmetric, so, whoa, that was a weird. Symmetric circle. <laughs> Symmetrical, I would do the same side on every one. So a right side on the top and then left side on here. So maybe I mixed it up and on this one, I have that hanging off right there, and maybe it's not as filled in. And there's a smaller one. Oops, so if you ever, if it looks like that, that just means you need to go and get more paint. It's all good. So that looked a little bit different. So again, I'm just going around, picking up different colors. Maybe that one, oops, be careful of that. It's okay if that happens though, it still looks okay. So I'm just drawing stems curving around, I'm trying to think how to do this. That is tricky with all that wet paint. Yeah, so I would maybe wait if you want, but I just, I'm gonna keep going. Would it help if you went the opposite direction? Probably, meaning paint this, oh. You know what is interesting, everyone? Not, it might not be interesting to you, but it's interesting to me. I paint all of my reefs that direction. Same direction? Oh, man. 
I never knew that. Now the next one you do, you got to go backwards. I am accepting that challenge. Nice. Wow. Oh, bullets more dry now. Okay, actually this is a good tip. If you can see on that how it bubbled up, that was because I had too much water. So I'm going to go to my paper towel and just damp off a little bit. So if it ever bubbles up and you find there's too much water, that's okay. You just damp off. Maybe I'm gonna go above that. So when you have completed your circle, then what you can do is you can take a step back and see, oh, are there any spots that maybe I can draw a little smaller one? So maybe I'll take some of this color and maybe draw a smaller guy. Right there, I saw some spots there. Or maybe just draw a leaf right there, a leaf right there. So we can also fill it with some flowers or some little dots after. But that is one. I'll do one more. I'll do the oval one. Actually, I'll show another technique. So if you want to, so on this one you saw that I used this as a guideline. If you want to draw and use this as your actual line that you're drawing on top of, let me fix this a little bit bigger. What I mean by that is I have my pencil line, which is great, but I'm going to help myself a little bit. I know it may not help you guys, so Maybe I won't erase it as much for you guys, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lightly erase so that my pencil line is just faintly there, just so I can kind of see it to help me. Okay, so I'm taking Keenan's challenge and I'm gonna draw this way. Oh snap. I need to change my position. So, let's see. I am going to I'm going to use the darker colors and I'm going to use the blues. So I'm going to make this one. And so reefs can be any color. I'm going to do a mixture of them. Let's see. I, this was, I'd say, medium sized leaves to small. I'm going to draw them really big now to exaggerate to show how you can do that as well. So I'm going to do the same thing as draw a stroke. And maybe on this one, actually, I'm going to draw that stroke, but I'm going to draw a leaf right on top of it. So I'm going to draw them bigger. Ooh, I like that texture in the middle of the leaf, too. That was really cool. That was not on purpose. Do you want to shift that to the left a little bit for a nice side shot? Yes, I can. Nice, thank you. Good? Ooh, this color is so pretty. Yeah, it is. It's like an ice green. Ooh. 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 Okay, so I'm gonna go keep going around. Maybe, so I want an in-between of this ice cream, as Keenan calls it. And I'm gonna, so I pick that up on my palette. So I'm using, I could have used another one, but I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of blue. So it's kind of an in-between. So again, I'm draw a line, use, drawing directly on my pencil lines. Drawing a bigger leaf right there. That's a good looking leaf. <laughs> and just leaving it more open. And so as I'm looking at that, what else you can do is now, because I have that empty space, maybe I draw the veins on some of them to give it some texture. So that's an option as well. Okay, now I want to add more blue here. <laughs> So what, that is another technique that you can do. So you can see that I did two different leaves. They're all, they're the same brush, just different sizes. So now I, let's see, I want to just fill it in some of the gaps. You can either fill it in, like I said, with adding more leaves. I just want to add some color to it as well. So I'm going to mix a few kind of pinks and reds and oranges, or I have my red here. I'm just going to add a few different colors or add my yellow and make a few different colors. 
So I'm going to mix in. So it, again, if you need for reference, you can look at your color wheel. So I have red and yellow, and I'm going to make some orange, red, orange, and yellow. So mix those together. That's a little bit more orange. So I want more of a yellowy. So again, use, the, use whatever palette you have. Make a bunch of different colors. Here's something to know, is that when you're looking at the color wheel, if you want a duller, dull, duller, dull, dull, Dual dollar duller. A duller? Duller? What am I trying to say? More dull. Less vibrant. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so is duller not a word? Wow. I don't think duller is a word, but it is now, god dang it. <laughs> what a more dull color. <laughs> you're going to take your color wheel and you're going to use the opposite color to make it more brown. But I don't want exactly brown, but what I'm trying to say is I'm going to take my Let's say I'm going to take my red, and I want to use a little bit of green. Not a lot, just a little. And that made more of a burgundy type of color. So it, it just made it browner, basically. So I want to use that here and have some variants of color. So I'm going to use that there. That's nice. Use a little bit of... That, so what I'm doing, actually that looks more Christmas, it's all good. You can save this for a Christmas card. Is, I am just drawing dots on this one. And I wanted to show this as a technique because I know, for me, sometimes flowers are, can be more complicated. So again, these are just quick little doodles that you can do to make it look full. And actually what I suggest to do is erase your pencil line because you're gonna want some color on the inside of your wreath as well. It's like a good salad. You know, you're trying to get all the colors. This does look like a very healthy, good salad. The you paper's the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> do you like kale or, I or spinach? I haven't or had romaine. much kale. I do like spinach. I love spinach. You've had fresh spinach out of a garden? Yes. It's the best. I agree. Do you grow spinach? Uh, I used to garden when I was a child with my parents. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's a fun fact I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. So again, I am just drawing little dots to fill in some space. So you're going to have fun with that. For this one, I, for most of them, I did the same thing. If you want to draw more, I guess, full buds, mm, I'm trying to think what color would go good with this. Actually, more of a mix like this. So if I look at this, I see some negative space right here. So another way that you can do it is maybe you draw more oval shapes like that and curves. So it's a similar shape, but then if you want to have it looking like it's coming off of that stem, it's just pick up a little bit of the color and then draw the stem like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cute little flower. So I'm just drawing them like that. Maybe do the same thing, add the stem coming up from there. Let me draw one more. So this is another thing of, like I was saying, of balance and harmony, is really take a step back and notice where you can fill in. So I'm thinking, there's not one that's actually really obvious at the moment, so maybe I'm just gonna draw a small one. A few buds right there. This feels very Hawaiian at the moment. Oh. Okay. So those were a few examples. If you want to just see the other ones that I was doing to give you more ideas, this was more of the greens and I did them smaller. You could do them really, really small like I was showing. You can also do it in a, in a blue. So those are all your fun ideas. Now what we're going to do is while those two are drying, we're going to practice our lettering. 
that was the watercolor part. Now we're going to do the lettering. So you have two different tools, like I said in the beginning, that you can letter with. And so to practice, what I want you to do is whether you want to do it with the brush or the brush pen, I can do both to show you, is I want you to use this practice sheet to just take your time just to practice. Just to put paper, just to put, I was going to say paper to pen, pen brush to paper. And I'm going to trace over these strokes. So I don't know. I if, almost suggested brush to pen. <laughs> I got brush to pen is what you mean. <laughs> I wish you would have. <laughs> Can they see these, the light gray? Yes. Okay, so I'm tracing over the light gray. And so this is just to warm up. So then when you are doing with watercolor, you may notice that you may have to get more, if you want a more darker color, you'll just pick up a little bit more color. So when you're painting, you can either think about if you, let me rephrase this. If you do want to think about the thin on the up, thick on the down, which is what we do here with lettering, is I want to show you that. However, if you don't want to, you do not have to. And so I want you to still feel empowered to letter even if you don't want to focus on this. But I do want to show, and maybe I'll do it. Mm, I'll just do it with continue with these. Is what's happening is I wrote it here, the motto is thin on the up, thick on the down. So what's happening is I'm applying thin pressure on the up and then I'm smushing the brush to go thick on the down and then I'm getting a thin stroke. So if you ever see lettering like that, that is what's happening. So I'm doing thick on the down, thin on the up. So it's the amount of pressure that I'm applying to the brush. Rather than if I don't think about it, it still looks great. The strokes will just be more even. So that's how you do that. Then, I'm going to, on the final one, actually show how I like to use a brush pen. So again, take your time if you'd like. I did one in a block style lettering, and then I did one in a cursive or script style lettering so that you can practice, and then there's room for you to do your own as well. So take your time and do that. When you are, mm, you know what, before I switch, let's, show how in action doing watercolor lettering and then I'll go and do the pen. So I'm going to do Aisha's name. Aisha is one of our awesome customer service members or customer happiness team members. So I'm going to draw her name. Aisha, this is for you. So the really cool thing about, like I said, lettering with watercolors is that you can get some really cool variants in your colors. So to do that is I'm going to pick up my one color. And actually this might all be with one color. Is, I'm going to do this first in pencil. And you can do this as well. That helps you. Pick up my color and I'm going to trace now. So when I'm doing this, I might go, oh, I did my S different. I'm going to show to do this S. I'm going to go and I'm going to pick up more color, and I'm just going to overlap a little bit. Have a lot of color on there. Oh, that's maybe too much. So if you ever, if you can see, if you ever have a ball like that, what happens is that just, this is a good troubleshooting thing to show you. So if you ever have too much on your brush like that, is that cool, Keaton? Yes, ma'am. Is that you'll go to paint and it'll just explode, which it worked in that case, but um, just know that sometimes it might be a little bit too saturated than you want it. So if you ever notice that, just go and I love these palettes because then you can just use the lip and get a little bit off if you ever have too much. So I'm gonna do her H. Oh, I need to do her A really little. I don't know why, but I keep reading her name as Aloha. Because it's, oh, look. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I'm going to draw her a flower on her eye. I could see that. Your eyes are just, ow. I just need glasses. <laughs> That's a fair statement. Okay. 
So that's so you can see the different color variances and I just use this one color on my palette. And Keenan, do you see that? The bloom that happened? Oh yeah, the bleeding into the flower from yeah. the stem. That's really cool. Beautiful. Okay, so that is how you do lettering with your brush. If you don't want to do a specific name, a few other ideas, like I was saying, was a thank you card, which I can do here. I'll do a thank you card, or you can do a sympathy card, or you can do a congrats card. There's so many different options. Maybe I'll do this one since I wrote that there. No, changing my mind. I want to do this one because I want to show you all how you can mix and use both your block lettering, so I'm going to write this out in pencil. So I'm just drawing my block letters, and then I'm going to do my watercolor lettering, so I'm going to do a mixture of it. So when you're using your brush pen, you can either decide if you want to press really hard or if you want to press really soft. So what I mean by that is that if I were to apply really heavy pressure, so if I were to write you right here, if I apply really heavy pressure, I'm going to get a really thick stroke because it's the same as a brush because this pen is flexible. If I'm going to apply thin pressure, I'm going to get a really thin stroke. So you can decide what you would like to do. Because my lettering is so small here, I think I'm just going to apply lighter pressure. And I'm simply going to trace over my block lettering here. with heartfelt, and then I want to do my lettering here. Actually, again, if you want to use your pencil. So, I hesitated for a second because can you see how there's the spacing right here? I am just trying to figure out how I want to draw my kind of creeped inside. Yeah, which I really like the look of. I was just thinking because I have such a long word. What if you hide the S? I love it. Behind that? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Look at you. Yeah, because then it'll fit. Right. <gasps> I'm going to have fun. I'm going to curl this and have it go behind there. Give that ATH a home. <laughs> You're picking up on so many things. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so now I'm just going to do the same thing. And I don't remember. <coughs> oh, bubble on. I'm going to use this green fake out. I want to use an orangey color. Okay. So when you are going back, if you do want to use your paintbrush, because again, watercolors are see-through, I'm going to just erase this a little bit. But I want to, sh oh snap. What happened? It's okay. It's the wind blowing. Got a little color. That's okay. Yeah. Can make it look like it's a wash. It's beautiful happens a lot. It's okay. If it happens to you, you keep going with it. I promise you the person will feel the love that you put into their card. And this is how you make it work. There. That totally works. Okay, but what I was going to say is that I want sympathy to not only be in watercolor, but I want to make it a little bit thicker than I did here, than my stroke there. So I'm just going to pick up my color. And I'm going to push just a little bit harder. Ooh, I had all these random ideas. I'm going to go and I'm going to pick up a little bit of my red and start to get to a darker. Oops, that might be a little too much. It's okay. No, I'm going to go back. It's 
So it wasn't just all orange. Mm, that went behind there. Did I spell that right? Yes. Sympathy. Oh, I had to think about it for a second. S I M P A T H Y. Okay, that looks really cool. And actually, I really like this blending. I might go in, and that was the best happy accident. I might go and I might add some shading right there in a different color. Yeah, that's nice. But okay, I wanted to do a few different options because you can see how many cool ways that you can take this one simple project and make it your own and make so many. Again, it's a great thing. Maybe you just do the reef, wreaths, wreaths, reef, reefs, wreaths. <laughs> and then that way you have them ready to go and then whenever you have an event you need to go to, you need to have a card ready. All you need to do is write the person's name, you can use your brush pen, you can do it really quickly, and then you're set to go. So that was a lot of fun. I'm so excited to see what you guys create. This is also a big time that I think we all can come together as a community. So this card project was actually very perfect timing so that we can spread joy and love to each other. We have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Lettering. We also have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Watercolor because this is watercolor and lettering that you can join and be a part of. We also have a Let's Make Art Journal. Can't I want to include everyone. <coughs> so you can join those. And we would like to cheer you on through your, your creative journey, and we hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.